Come what may, bring it on. I'm gonna love it. Welcome to LDS Unmarried Life. This is a podcast for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who find themselves single either because they're divorced, widowed, or not yet married. There is no affiliation with the church. I am the host, Annette Bybee. You can find this podcast on my website at AnnetteTalks.com. Also, it's on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and YouTube. And um, today, I am joined by Marie Leslie. Want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you. And the reason that we're doing this, I'll get this out of the way first, and then I want you to tell me about yourself. Um, the reason we're doing this is I, I did a, gr- a roundtable discussion about long-distance relationships uh, about a month ago, I think. And it ended with us kind of saying we don't really think they're a good idea and um, probably shouldn't try them. And I got, a, I got a message from a lady on Facebook basically taking me to task and telling me that she thinks that, um, first of all, I needed some positive stories about long-distance relationships that worked out and that she didn't want to just hear from my 40-year-old, 50-year-old perspective. So I went on to Facebook and I said, who's got positive stories about long-distance relationships? And you replied. And tell us why, why you have some stories. All right. My first career was as a photographer. I spent 30 years photographing weddings. Um, The first half was largely, almost all LDS weddings. And the second half was kind of a mix. But 30 years of photographing weddings means you've seen it all when it comes to relationships. Awesome. So we're going to go into that. Um, But first, tell me what else you do and what else you're working on right now, because you're an interesting lady. And Marie is local here to the Denver area. In case anyone wants to contact her, we'll give you contact information after we're done. All right. Sounds good. Well, after I... Well, while I had my photography studio, I started doing marketing consulting. Uh, Photography is kind of a cyclical business. And at the beginning of the internet age, people wanted to know how I got a website and then what to do with it once you had it. So I started uh, teaching people, helping people set up websites, teaching them what to do. And then when we came here to Denver, uh, it was time for a change. And so my primary business now is coaching and consulting for small businesses and entrepreneurs. I really have a focus in communication and clear messaging. And it just, it's a lot of fun. My, my academic background is investigative journalism. So communication has always been my kind of stock and trade. Oh, um, I don't think I knew that about the investigative journalism. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, I love it. Yeah. I, I kind of felt it's, the photography thing was actually an accident. Oh. Um, <laughs> and there's a long story behind that. But uh, basically, I, I love photography. Words and pictures together, you know, make for better communication. But so now my focus is primarily on on helping small businesses get going and having clear messages and helping people learn how to communicate effectively. Awesome. Well, I know you and I have worked together a little bit, and I I really appreciate the advice that you gave me. And uh, you helped me to to actually be brave enough to move forward with what I'm doing with the whole podcasting and everything. So if anybody else is out there and they're thinking about shifting gears into a small business or they're in a small business that they need some help with, then you would be a good person to contact, it sounds like. Yes, I love to work with people who are trying to figure out if you know, owning their own business, being self-employed, or being an entrepreneur is the path for them. Awesome. And I think it's great. I love the whole lot. I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. But now that I've kind of done a lot on my own, I mean, I did my law practice before, and now I'm doing this, I think it's awesome. I mean, it's difficult, but calling your own shots, yeah, you can't really beat that. Yeah. All right, so let's get into some of your stories. So I I want to hear the most intriguing one first that you teased me with on Facebook um, about a lady who wasn't that thrilled about her daughter getting married. Oh, yes. We, we certainly had a few of those over the years. So the one that you're talking about was uh, um, we, had, we had a couple. Um, it was actually the bride was someone that we'd known for quite some time. Um, and she was getting married. And so they called us to come over and, and talk about wedding photography. And, and we're sitting around the table with her and her mom. And it's very, you know, it's very common to have mom there because mom, is, mom and dad are usually paying the bills. Right. Dad isn't really all that interested. He just wants to know he's, what he's getting for his money. Um, but mom's always there. And so we're talking about it. And she's telling us about her, 
fiance and how they met and, you know, how wonderful he is and all those things. And, and she excused herself uh, for whatever reason for a minute. And when she left the room, her mother turned to us and said, if I can talk her out of marrying him, can I have my deposit back? <laughs> And, you know, it was kind of a, that was a first. I, I don't so think So the I fiance was, was not in the room? The no, okay. he was not with us at all. He, oh, okay. A lot of times we don't get both the bride and groom. Or back in, in maybe the first 15 years or so of our business, it was more common for the bride to do all the planning and the groom just showed up you know, for the big day. Right. You know, maybe he got asked what kind of cake he liked or something, or mm -hmm. he got some input on his tuxedo, but that was about it. Uh, and so, yeah, he wasn't there. It was just mom and, and the bride, and, and she wanted oh. to know if she could have her money back. She could talk him out of it. So what did you tell her? I reminded her that in our, con in our contract that payments are not refundable. Good for you. <laughs> so did that one go ahead? It, it actually did, and it, and it ended up being a really interesting wedding. Um, I think the groom knew where he stood with the family, and um, so <clears throat> it was... Um, the true Mormon fashion, the bride and groom showed up almost an hour late to their own wedding. Oh session. gosh! <laughs> so it was one of those crazy Mormon standard kind of time. things. Yes. Was this a temple ceiling? Yes. And he was an hour. He late. made it. He made it to the temple on time, but between the temple, um, at the time we were in San Diego, and the San Diego temple wasn't open yet. So that meant for weddings, we were driving to the LA temple. And, oh. And how it works from San Diego to LA is if you have a wedding on a Friday. It's about two hours, back then anyway, it's probably much worse now, Yes. but it was about two hours from San Diego to the temple in Los Angeles. Friday afternoons in LA, though, you know, everyone leaves the city, and so it's about four hours to get back. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't know the story was if they got caught in traffic or whatever it was, but they were about an hour late coming back to the oh. wedding reception. Um, last we heard, though which was just a few years ago, they are still married. And this was... And happy. And so the original, I mean, the marriage was Was in ago? about maybe 1990. Oh, okay. So it's been All right. a good 25 years. Now, he's probably just doing it despite his mother. <laughs> if I were him, I'd be like, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Yes, they are still quite happily married. Oh, good. I mean, he was a nice guy. I don't know what the issue is. I think they were, they were hoping for, you know, marry a doctor or a lawyer, oh, businessman, right. and... And he wasn't one of those. No. So, yeah, we, we laughed about that one for years. Yeah, that is <laughs> funny. So give us, um, give us a, a story of a long-distance relationship that you know of that worked out. All right. Well, we, have, um, we had one wedding another many years ago. Um, he met a girl on his mission in one of the Scandinavian countries. I can't tell you which one because I can't remember. Um, and came home, and they corresponded for a couple of years and had some visits back and forth. Um, I can't imagine how challenging that is because on top of everything else, you have some language and big culture differences um, with that. But eventually uh, he proposed and apparently, and I, and I believe it's still the case, if you are marrying an American and you want to come here to live, you have to get married here. It's much easier to come here and get married, get that fiance visa and come here. And, and, you know, back then in the, in the nineties, it wasn't terribly difficult. Um, and so they did that married, very lovely wedding. And, and they are still, as far as we know, they're still married. Um, his family adored her. There was no, please talk her out of the wedding. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, she was, she was darling, thankfully. And I think in most Scandinavian countries have pretty good grasp on English. So, you know, that wasn't, that I'm sure made it a little easier, but there's still those cultural things. And, and we can, you know, sometimes see those we've, we've had a few, um, wedding photographers are kind of like psychiatrists. Uh, really? <laughs> People seem to feel the need to, you know, let me, let me unload my life story on you and have you fix my problems. And so we had a few brides and maybe it was because they didn't because it usually ended up being the groom was American and the bride was from some other country. Much more common than the other probably way around. Probably because of the mission thing. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it was probably the mission thing. Um, you know, I remember one bride was just terrified. When we got to the end of the reception, she did not want to leave. And I'm thinking, what did your, what did your mother tell you about being married? Oh, no. Because she was, I mean, true, and that's what she was terrified about. 
Really? The honeymoon? Yes. Oh, dear. I'm like, it's going to be okay. Trust me on that one. Oh, my gosh. I didn't <laughs> know that wedding photographers um, got to play that role. You know, I, I think I made the mistake when I got married of not hiring one. My mm -hmm. my um, stepdad did the pictures. Mm -hmm. And you know, he never even took the um, train on my dress down and took a picture like that. And so <coughs> I think I've decided that in the, the next time I get married, <coughs> assuming mm -hmm. this happens again, if it does, it's only one more time. <laughs> but if it does happen again, that's where I want to spend my money is on the pictures. Because, mm -hmm. and the music. I want, I want dancing and I want good pictures. And a good party. Yes, exactly. Because we don't have this, you know, uh, public ceremony. And mm -hmm. so obviously you're not spending any money on the temple. Of course, that's the focus. Yeah. But when you get done with that and you're out, you want to have fun and you want to remember that it looked great. You know, like I don't need a gazillion pictures of me in my dress and my husband, I want a couple of nice ones, but I want to see everybody that was there and what, how mm -hmm. much fun it was and my family and everything. So I, but I didn't know that that was the role of the photographer. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't know either when I first started, but if you remember in, in my defense, I was 19 when I started my photography business. Wow. I was completely clueless. I think I'd been to one wedding. <laughs> so I knew, you know, I knew how to take pictures. I didn't know anything else. Um, and, but that seems to be, I think it's because uh, photographers spend a lot of time with you at your wedding. And, and so one of the pieces of advice we would always give people is make sure you like your photographer because they're going to be with you all day long in, in most cases. You know, they're right. everywhere you go. They're there when you're getting ready and they're there to do the pictures and they're there. Um, and, and a lot of photographers, especially LDS weddings, are if you get a good one, they can keep things moving. And so... So you yeah, they're kind of moving yeah. traffic. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I find frustrating. I went to um, a niece's wedding and oh gosh, it seemed interminable. All the time that was spent on the pictures. I just felt like, mm -hmm. I think we were sitting around waiting at the tables for like two hours for them to come be that's done with crazy. the pictures. See. And yeah, I thought... This is, that, that's not really cool. Why, you know, I shouldn't take that much time. We always did ours before. So you have the temple and we'd say, okay, you're going to come out of the temple and we give them a time frame. And we'd say, we're going to spend about an hour with you after the wedding at the temple taking pictures and we get the family done first so they can all leave and be out of your way and not bothering you so you can actually have fun. <laughs> right. Um, and then we'd say, okay, you have to be at the reception an hour before because we're going to take all of the pictures. When the reception starts, we stop taking formal pictures. And so if you're not there on time and you don't get your pictures, oh, well. That's good because you don't problem. keep all the people waiting. Yeah, because I because they're not going to look at the bride and groom and go, oh, they must have showed up late or mom showed up late. It's going to be a lousy photographer. It's monopolizing our time. So that was, you know, it was kind of to preserve our reputation because we were not the ones who were late. <laughs> right. And so we would do that and... But, you know, as far as pictures, that's the same thing. I tell my kids, you know, if you ever get married, we're getting good photographers. Because after the wedding's over, um, besides your spouse, you have a dress in a box, a ring, and stale cake, and pictures. Yeah, yeah, and, that's and, it. You know, and, 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 and what is it when we look at, um, like, our family history? What are the pictures? What do we treasure most? It's those old pictures. Mm -hmm. And most of them, or many of them, are wedding pictures. Yes. Someone just sent me a wedding portrait of my great grandparents that I'd never seen before. And it's really the only picture well, I have of them. Didn't you share that on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. That yes. was awesome. Yes. And it's like, oh, I love man, those old so wedding I'm pictures. Too. Especially, you know, when, when, they're, when they're not smiling. And you know, it's because they had to sit there and wait and wait and wait <laughs> yes. and wait for this flash to go off or whatever it is that needed yeah. to happen. Cause, because <clears> we can hold our expression when it's not a smile. Right. And, and then we don't be blurry. But so, yeah, to me, that was, that was always the important thing. I'm like, you don't need all that, a lot of the other stuff that we do. I tell my kids, my girls, when you get married, you don't need a wedding party. They're, you're going to ask your best friends to spend lots of money on ugly dresses to be in a picture. Like, yeah. just tell them all to go out and buy a dress and we'll take pictures anyway. <laughs> yeah. I've never liked the whole bridesmaid thing. No, anyway. I am not I didn't have any at mine, and I won't in the next time. Which brings me to the next question. Are you still doing pictures at wedding photography? Or? I do occasionally. Okay. I don't do a whole lot anymore. Um, most of what I do is either for, for friends of mine um, or, as my kids will say, friends of my children or children of my friends. <laughs> um, it just, it's just, ve it's, it's a very demanding job, and I loved doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but the field is really saturated, and with digital photography, uh, it's very hard to get paid what you're worth. Oh, I'm sure. So yeah. I was like, 
I do <clears throat> I do more portraits and things for oh. people now than I do weddings, okay. but I do occasionally. I probably do two weddings a year. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so, that's doable. You know, I have a raft of nieces and nephews who are still single. <laughs> so you've got some yes and I have promised my children that I will not photograph their weddings because <laughs> I want to be the mom when they get yeah married you don't want to be busy doing that definitely no. so do you do many um second time or third time around weddings yeah in fact I I you'll laugh I did three weddings for the same groom oh no <laughs> that... <laughs> oh yes. my goodness I'm like okay you've hit your limit <laughs> yeah if you do it if you get married again don't call me yeah <laughs> I, so do you know the story behind any why the first um, two didn't work? Because we're not using any names. So. No, the the first one, um, if I remember right, he he didn't really want to be married. I'm not sure how that all worked out, but he left just a couple months. Oh, it was a short into one into the huh? wedding, mm -hmm. um, and you know, and said, I just really didn't want to be married. We actually had one wedding um, where they didn't even make it to the honeymoon. Wow. Um, you know what? I, I heard a story like that. Those. I heard a story like that growing up where like he literally left the next day. And I mm -hmm. just wonder what, you know, and I, and I, so I tell my, so my kids have, you know, had a raft of relationship advice growing up because I've seen all these weddings. And I, I think the bottom line was, I think he knew before he knew before the wedding, but it was, you know, I think there was a lot of family pressure. The, we've gone through all this. We've invited all these people. You need to do this. It is far easier to call off a wedding than to have to go get a divorce. Oh, and yeah. Afterwards. I don't and know I'm why like, people don't I'm like, I don't care that. if you're standing at the door to the temple. Yeah. If you know that this isn't what you... You can turn to me at that point and say, can we go home? And I'll say yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd much rather tell everybody that we're not having a wedding today than put them through the pain of you know, divorce and annulment. And, oh, uh, no, no, I can tell you. Yeah. <clears throat> going through divorce. <clears throat> no, I, I, I would rather call off. Yeah. So wedding. we had, yeah, so we, we've had a couple that, that I'm sure should have been. And we had another one and they were both, I mean, just beautiful, gorgeous weddings with, in the one case, the groom was just this really awesome guy. It was a military wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and those can be really fun when they do a full on military wedding. Um, and she just decided pretty much by the time I think the reception was over that, well, that was really great. That was a fun party and I'm out of here. <laughs> wow. But she and went uh, through with it and then yeah. walked away. And, I, and I'm like, why would you do that? Unless she was looking for military benefits, but I'm pretty sure if you're only married for a couple of days, you don't get any. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure there's gotta be some kind of a yeah. rule about that. Yeah, so with the guy that was married mm -hmm. three times, mm -hmm. what, what do you think happened to the second? I and mean, you were kind of the, uh, um, let me see. It was, I think it was just a bad choice. I think it was a rebound because it was uh -huh. probably less than two years after the first one. Okay. And so I think it was a rebound relationship. And it, that goes back to what saying. I'm always telling people mm -hmm. about NDS and newly divorced syndrome. <laughs> Don't go dating quickly because that mm -hmm. first relationship is not going to last. Yeah. Guarantee you. So if, if you, if you're dating within six months of your divorce, you're going to, you're going to dump that person mm -hmm. and it's not, I know I've been on the dumpy side, mm -hmm. and so I I won't I won't date someone who's newly divorced. I find out a lot of times on the first date. I had one guy say, "Oh yeah, my divorce was final yesterday." I'm like, oh, I okay, like yes, we're going home now. <laughs> yeah, I should have known that ahead of time. And then another one, yeah, he was like, "Oh, a week ago." I'm like, oh, why am I here? So yeah. the third time, has, how long ago the was that? Third time, it's been twenty years, and it stuck, and it stuck. Yay! It's like, hey, finally. Because I think a lot yeah. of us out here in divorce land, I mean, not everyone that listens is divorced, but I would say there's a good portion mm -hmm. of us that are, want to know that there's a chance that the second time will happen and, you know, yes. it'll work out. Yeah. And I, you know, we had another one where she got married three, three different times and we had all three. Uh, the first one, she was just too young. They were, they got married really young and they weren't ready. Um, the second one, I think she thought he was going to, you know, take care of her mm. on the surface. He, he was a, he was a business owner and he was, you know, he seemed really great. And then he had an affair. Oh. Um, and that was kind of the end of that. And then, uh, so the third, the third one, she took her time mm. a little more and, you know, we always tell people that learn, learn from your mistakes. My father-in-law, um, would always say, uh, you, you should know somebody in all four seasons before you marry them. Yeah. And, um, we, you know, we kind of took that. I'm married, I knew my husband for 
15 years before we started dating. Wow. And we were friends. We grew up in the same ward. Oh, okay. Um, but he was not my childhood sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you knew him, but you weren't. Yeah. And then we were really good. And then after he came back from his mission, we were really good friends for a long time. And, and then eventually we dated for like a year and then got married. But so, you knew each other for a long yeah, time, too. Yeah, we'd known each other And then really a year well. of dating is reasonable. Yeah. I, I'm surprised at people who think that's a long time. Yeah, I don't. I know. In the church, it's crazy. I, I knew uh, there was a couple oh, that met last summer. I think oh, it was either July or August at a singles retreat, and then got married in November. Oh yeah, to me, I, I mean, that just starts fear into my heart. Yeah, um, the, I think the only way that would happen with me is if an angel came down <laughs> and said, yeah. "Annette." First, they would quote scripture because they always do that, and then you have to say, "Annette." This is the man for you. You need to get married. And even then I could be like, could I have a long engagement? <laughs> yeah. Could, could we, can we set a date for next year? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't, I'm not going through this again. You know, I don't. And especially I don't do with kids. I think yes. you need that. You must need that cushion. But one of, one of the saddest stories I heard about that was um, years and years ago. I probably haven't been married four or five years. Um, I was at a Relief Society event and it was just kind of one of those, like a barbecue or something. And, and we're all sitting around and people are talking about, getting married and and I said you know my husband is is my best friend I mean we really were pretty much best friends before we started dating we did all kinds of stuff together all the time uh, he calls it platonic dating uh, <laughs> that's a good term but because um, like we, we did I mean we neither thought of it we talked to each other about our dates and stuff so it wasn't like you know there was some sort of little romance thing going on that we weren't talking about um and so I was talking about that and the woman sitting next to me said I hope I can be friends with my husband someday. Oh. And I was like, oh, knife to the heart. Oh. And, and I just kind of looked at her and she said, well, you know, we met at school and we dated for three months and we got married. And it was like, <gasps> oh. and, and, and then he was in school and we had three babies before he graduated. And so now he's working two jobs and, oh. and I'm like, you have three children with someone and you're not friends with them. Oh. Oh, it just, it made me so sad. That is so, very sad. So I, you know, that's one of my things. And so as I started watching my brides and grooms, I could see who had dated long enough to become friends or who knew each other long enough. I remember one couple, um, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, we were doing their, they met, he had come to where she lived on a mission. They met, he went home, they had a little um, you know, four or five states away. They, they had some correspondence for a few months. He came back, proposed, and they were getting married. He'd only been there for a week oh. when they proposed. So they didn't really, I mean, all of their, it was all, you know, it was all long distance. Um, but I remember doing their engagement pictures and they were not even physically comfortable with each other yet. So it was kind of awkward. And, and so that puts a lot of on us because we need to make these pictures look like they are just head over heels in love and can't stand to be apart from each other. And they were kind of like barely at the holding hand stage of, of Were you dating. able to make it look like they were? I was just yeah, trying it to took a lot that. of work, but, <laughs> but we did it. And it's almost like they directing. Were, okay. Yeah. Now you yes. two face each other and look like you like each other. And we use that phrase a lot <laughs> oh my because God. that breaks the tension. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we did. And then, and then we did, we photographed their wedding and, and yes, it's been, it's, it's got to be at least a dozen years and they are still married. So it does, okay, you know, so it does, does work sometimes, you know, I think that if you're going to do a long distance thing and then get married, there has got to be that extra measure of marriage is a commitment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter what, I am going to make this work. And you both have to feel that way. And that's what we've seen with, with our long distance relationships that have worked out is that they both come into it with. Um, especially the LDS temple weddings, I'm marrying forever and I'm marrying this person forever and I will make this work. And, and hopefully, you know, the person who brought the other one from some foreign country is thinking, and I will do whatever it takes to make this person happy here. Yes. Cause they're going to have to go the extra mile uh, yes. because this person has left their, their family, their friends, mm -hmm. their country, their culture, everything behind for you. Yeah. And it, and it can be challenging. We have, we just, we did one last year. Um, he met her on his mission. They'd not become sweethearts. She was, in fact, when they first met, she was not a member of the church and he was teaching her mother and she couldn't stand, they couldn't stand each other. They were just, you know, um, 
and and things when I was from a South American country. And eventually, though, she her mother joined the church, and then eventually she joined the church and her family. Um, and she went on a mission somewhere else. Um, and, and he'd gone back to you know, do the, you know, let me take my family to see where I went on a mission and, and met up with the mom and met up with her. And, and I guess at that point, there was kind of a little bit of a spark, but then she went on a mission. And um, and so they wrote while she was on her mission. And, and um, he went back and forth a couple of times. Well, okay, probably way more than a couple of times. I think he was down there every three or four months. Um, for a couple of years. Oh, wow. Um, That's a long term. Yeah, because he's in his, I think he's 26 or 27 now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was several years, over a period of several years, and they lots of Skype time. I, I think technology has made it easier. I mean, there's a big difference between when phone calls were, you know, five bucks a minute, and now we can Skype for free. Yeah. And so you, and, and I think there's a different level of, communication when you can see each other and talk, even if it's on Skype. Uh, and so they decided, um, it hasn't been two years now, that they he proposed to her. He went down and proposed to her at Christmas two years ago. Um, and they started the visa process, which is now very, very difficult. Um, they were able to get a visa in eight months because they, uh, their family knows some Congress. You know, oh, uh-huh. a couple of senators that were able to intervene on, on their behalf. Um, she did not get her visa until three days before their wedding. Wow. So she came to the U.S. for the first time, and she didn't really speak hardly any English. Um, and his family doesn't speak Spanish. Right. Well, there's a little bit. He has a he had an uncle. I have a, my minor was Spanish, so I know some. And an uncle that, that served a mission in South America and... And so there was a little bit of it, but you know how overwhelming. And um, her parents were not able to get tourist visas; they Aww. would not give them to them because they um, said, "Oh, you'll you'll try and stay in the country illegally if we let you go to this." Uh. And so it was really sad. Um, but so it was hard. So she came here all alone. Um, she got her green card on Friday. <laughs> it took a year and a half, um, and they just went because they just left uh, last night to go home and visit. So she's finally able to go visit her family. But, um, but you know, it was a long, um, a long courtship, and there was lots of you know, travel time. And, and really, I think that made a big difference in um, the relationship. And the other thing is that when she came here and they got married, his family was willing to um, really commit to helping her assimilate. And so she was able to enroll in an intensive English program and, and, you know, go through all those things. But it'll be much easier now because now that she has a green card, she can get a driver's license, she can go to school, she can get a job. Uh, and those things are hard, and, and we don't think about that a lot when we think about, I love this person, I want to marry them. When they come here, how's that going to work? Yeah, it's, a, it's completely different than just marrying another American. Yeah. My ex actually married a Peruvian, and so I'm watching this process, and I part of me, it fears that she's going to say this is too overwhelming and go back to Peru. And I don't want that to happen because my girls love her and she's a real sweet lady. And I think, you know, I hope it works out. But I can see her going through a lot of struggles. She doesn't drive yet. And I don't Mm -hmm. know. I know she works. So I'm guessing she has a green card. But her English is very rudimentary. And um, she hasn't been able to get stable employment. And she doesn't drive. And I just think, how hard it must be for her. And my ex doesn't speak Spanish. They talked. They talked over Google Translate. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so they may know entirely different things than I they think. think. <laughs> really, no doubt. Uh, yeah, it's so. very, it would be. It's very. I think culturally isolating. I mean, I you know I can't imagine we we'd like to travel and go to different places, but I um, I can't imagine moving to a country where I didn't know anyone, and I didn't have, you know, I didn't have those connections. You know, at least here there is a little bit of a Peruvian community, right? So you can and Spanish with speakers that she can mm-hmm. talk yeah. to. I think in her ward there's a few. There's an Argentinian, maybe, and a few other. So yeah, I was gonna say we have Spanish words here, but he doesn't speak Spanish. That's gonna be kind of a problem. <laughs> I know. I picture them sitting at homes using Google Translate. <laughs> I mean, I think he's learned oh, yeah. some, and she's she's learning English. She's yeah. taking classes too, but I yeah. just to me, I can't imagine being able to communicate well enough with someone who doesn't have English as a native language. I just, for myself, I don't, 
Yeah, do I it. think I've definitely some some challenges in in doing that, and then you know, but it, it doesn't always it doesn't it the marriage can work out, but a lot of times it's a, it's a long bumpy road to get there. Uh, we have some friends um, who he married a woman from a Scandinavian country. Um, he'd known her many years ago. Uh, I think she was here when they were in high school as an exchange student. And, and then many, many years later, they reconnected and um, they got married. It took five years for her to get authorization to immigrate to the United States. And so for five years, they had this commuter marriage where um, they could see each other like maybe two or three times a year. Oh, gosh. You know, because... Even if you're saving all your pennies, that flying back and forth to Europe gets expensive oh, <laughs> yeah. really quickly. And I, you know, that's a testament to endurance. And now she's been here for a number of years now, not, I think, four or five years. But, but to have that first five years of your marriage where you live in separate countries. And so you have to be really committed for the long haul. And, and, and you have to know what you're getting into if you're going to do a long distance, whether it's moving from one state to another because... That's still complicated Yeah. if you haven't lived in the same place for a while. You know, like, it's different, I think, when you meet at school. And maybe, you know, he lives in Virginia and she lives in California. That's one thing. But when it's foreign, you know, when you're li- talking about somebody who's in a different country, and, and you really don't get to spend a lot of time together before you're married. So that adds an extra, in addition to the cultural differences, it's the, all those little things we don't think about knowing somebody. I mean, I figure I missed out ha, on a lot of the difficulties of being newlywed because I knew my husband so well when we got married. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, I have to figure out what this guy likes and what he doesn't like. And, you know, yeah. just, so it sounds like some yeah. of the long distance relationships probably have a better chance if they took more time mm-hmm. um, ahead of time um, yeah. and uh, did the Skyping and things. And now they do um, Marco Polo. You know, that yeah. app, and you can leave video messages for each other. That helps, but Skype's even better because you can get that instant yeah. um, communication. So, and, and it's visual. You yes. can see each other. And I think that, you know, we, you, there's, there's a difference between just hearing and hearing and seeing so that you can, you can read body language and, yeah. and things like that and figure out, you know, is this person really into me? Am I really into them? Or is this kind of one of those things? Because there are some, and I, um, we, haven't, we haven't experienced it, but there are a few where that we know of that we've heard from other wedding photography colleagues that it was basically a, let me make a relationship with you so I can get to the United States and get a green mm. card. And, and those, you know, that, and that's really sad because, um, and it happens on both sides. There are women who do it and there are men who do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that can be really hard. And so I think... I think the key to a long distance relationship is, is being willing to take the time. Yes. And not trying to rush into it because yeah, yeah it's, the problem is you rush and then it, they literally say, marry in haste, repent at leisure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, that's what happens. And you end mm-hmm. up with a divorce or a second divorce mm-hmm. or whatever. And, or, or miserable. Yeah. I mean, we, we all know people who you just look at them and think, why are you still married? Yeah. Because you're both clearly as miserable as the day is long. I know. It's so funny because, um, you know, I was on both sides. When I was married, I would go to church and I would be miserable a lot of times. <laughs> and now I'm single. And it's funny because um, sometimes the Relief Society presidency will be very careful when they do the lessons on marriage to, to, to you know, acknowledge the single ladies or the divorced mm-hmm. ladies and things. And, and it's at the back of my head or the tip of my tongue to say, um, I am divorced, but I can look around and tell you that some of you married ladies are not happy. <laughs> so it's okay, really, because yes. you can, you can, uh, mm-hmm. it's like my, I had one bishop that said, when you look out on the um, congregation, all you see is, it's like looking out on ducks. You just see this placid duck sitting on top of the water and you don't mm-hmm. see the little legs paddling underneath. And so I know that there are legs paddling underneath on a lot of those marriages. I feel mm-hmm. really bad for those I people because I would rather be single than unhappily married. And I need yes. to remind myself that <laughs> every time I get antsy about trying to find someone to marry again, I need to remind myself I don't want to be unhappily married again. So yeah. When I was a young women leader, I would tell the girls that all the time. There are worse things in life than being single, and one of them is being in a bad marriage. You know, don't marry because, I mean, 
because uh, like for example my my oldest sister did not marry until she was 39 and and people would you know and I know they meant well <laughs> you just cringe every time you hear it and 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 they would tell her she was too picky or she needed to oh, just gosh. settle Oh, like, no, no one should ever just settle. No, for that's how you end up with a bad marriage. Yes. And, and so, yeah, you, know, you just don't go that route. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at, you know, too. It's like I I know the mistakes I made the first time around and mm-hmm. I'm not going to do those again. And you get to make new ones. <laughs> yeah, I can make totally different ones. Well, and now I've got so much more writing on it with, you know, yeah. having three daughters at home. Um so I wouldn't, for my own, I wouldn't do long distance. No, I think, I think in, in, in especially when you, when you have children, and, and, and obviously for you, moving is not an option. Right. So unless that person says, I'm interested in dating you and I'm going to move to Denver now. Yes, that's the only way. He wouldn't move to Denver yeah. now and... And let's see it what happens. It would be on the understanding that there is no guarantee that this is going to end up in marriage. Exactly. And that's, you know, and I think that's... That's it's important, and, and it has to, you know, you have to go into these things with, let's see where this goes, yes. and not, you're going to be the one, and I'm going to marry you, and right. to me, that would make me run screaming from the room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like when, when the, we get those people who say, um, oh, you're the answer to my prayer, and I'm going, oh, dear. oh no, I don't know what yeah. you prayed for, yeah. <laughs> but if I'm the answer, we're all in trouble. Right. <laughs> But I, I don't discount inspiration. Yes. I mean, you do hear this. I mm-hmm. Actually, there's a couple in my ward that um, they've been married for 30 plus years. And we ran into them at the restaurant the other night, our little podcasting group. Mm-hmm. And they, because we, and we were, we had been podcasting about um, how do you know if he's, if that person's into you, right? Yeah. And they, and so he, the, the gentleman said, well, how do you know? Because when he met his wife, he was told, this is going to be my wife. I mean, you hear these stories from apostles <laughs> yeah. and things. I'm always jealous as I'll get out because that's not happening to me. I don't think it will. <laughs> but he was told that she was going to be his wife. And she had the same mm-hmm. um, inspiration. And they got engaged like 10 days later. I mean, but so I know those things do happen. And they've yes. been married forever. And they're great. They're a wonderful couple. But it, it better be on both sides. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it better be really clear you know, and I say, even if that happened to me right now with my girls, I would still say, great, let's date and see what, you know, how yes. it goes. Because I, I'm not going to just... We have to see how they're going to, to do with your girls. Yes. Because that's, you know, it's a part of your family. It's one thing when you don't have children, um, and I would say, or if they're grown, but at the same time, if, you know, if, if I were, you know, have something happen, I was in a position where I needed to remarry. Yes, I have I have four adult children now, but if whoever I was dating didn't get along with my adult children, they're out. Cause yeah. you know, I kind of like my kids. I wish days. my mom would have had that attitude because she married a guy that nobody, like, oh. they're divorced now oh, yeah. and not surprising. But I already promised my girls, I won't marry someone that you girls don't like. I yeah. just wouldn't do that to them. And if they don't like him, then there's something wrong anyway. Mm-hmm. And yeah, well, and there's a, there's a difference. I think um, having seen lots of over the years, between the, I don't want my mom to get remarried because it might because it means that that uh, that my parents are really never getting back together and red flag this guy makes me uncomfortable. Yes, you know? yes, and, and then, this is why I talk to them, even though I'm not dating anyone mm-hmm. right now. Uh, the idea is eventually I'd like to get remarried, and they're young enough right now. I mean, my oldest is ten. They say it starts getting more difficult when they hit into the tweens and teens to remarry. Oh, yeah. And so it would be nice if someone would come along fairly soon so I could avoid trying to, you know, get yeah. teens to go along. But I, I talk to them regularly like it could happen down the line so that the idea is there. It's not a shock. Yes. You're doing what? Yeah. Your and whole so, life is no longer revolving around us? <laughs> yeah. And so I get things like, Mom, you're too old to get married. <laughs> Or mom, and I said, well, your dad was older than I was when he got remarried. Oh, well, yeah, guys are just dumb. Like, so I can tell mm-hmm. there's a little resistance there. And so mm-hmm. I'll, I'm trying to just kind of lay the groundwork for it. But I said, I've told them, I will not marry someone that you don't like. Don't worry about it, okay? Mm-hmm. So, and they've liked every guy that I've introduced I, as friends. I don't, every time I date a guy, I do mm-hmm. not bring him around. Um, but they oh, see, yeah. they know I hang out with guys and they've met my guy friends and they've all gotten along with my guy friends. So I'm not really worried. 
but I want them to know. So that brings me to another question. Do you, have you seen many blended family um, situations that have worked out? I have seen, and there are a number of them. You know, there are obviously a few that it's, you know, second marriages are tough. And, yes. and I heard that one of the reasons that they're really tough is that having gone through one divorce, it's easier to fathom the idea of a second one. Yeah. Um, but I've seen some really great um, blended family. In fact, I grew up in one. Um, I am a result of my mom's second marriage. I have two oh. older sisters. She was married before. Um, I, it never crossed my mind that they were anything other than my sisters. We were, we were raised that we were all, I mean, and we were very small. And I'm sure that helped. I mean, my sisters were really small because my next sister and I are only two years apart. Um, and I think that makes a difference is mm -hmm. just, it isn't stepmom, stepdad, stepsister, stepbrother. It is, we are a family. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, uh, I think it makes a big difference. Uh, Cause I, it, I mean, it just, it never crossed my mind. And, and when I was six or seven, my dad adopted my older sisters, but I don't think I even knew what that meant except that their name changed. Oh yeah. And it was like, Oh, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> but there was no, there was no difference there there we were all the same family mm -hmm. and, and so it wasn't his and hers um my sister's one that has done really well I have, I have a sister who has been married more than once in fact she's one of my one of my favorite getting remarried stories um our daughter was when she got married our oldest daughter was two or three I think she, yeah I think she must have been at least three three and a half yeah um and so she was going to be the flower girl at my oh, sister's so wedding and, and so it's the night before the wedding and she's getting ready for for bed and and she says to me am I getting a new dad oh. and I said <laughs> no why why would you need a new dad and she says well my dad's getting kind of old oh. Oh. and I was, when I was done laughing I said what makes you think that you'd be getting a new dad and and she said um well, Kyle's getting a new dad. And I said, no, Kyle still has his dad. His mom is just getting a new husband. And so he's getting an extra dad. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> just crap. That's awesome. <laughs> it is what goes through kids' minds. Yeah. But uh, so she, she remarried. She had two children. Um, and they were like 10 and 7, I think. And he had four. Wow. And they were kind of the same age. I think the oldest one at the time was maybe 13. And the interesting part was that he had custody oh, of the four. Yeah. So they got married and had these six children and then they've had two more. They've been married now for more than 20 years. Wow. And, and it has worked. And awesome. I know there have been some rough, there have been some, some challenges with the kids. And in the beginning, she and the ex were always, you know, the ex-wife were always at Lager has now they're really good friends. They actually were on a bowling team together a few years ago. I love it when I hear that because so, I always think yeah. it's so dumb yes. not to get along with exes. You know, mm -hmm. it's like really why would you want to have a contentious relationship with someone that you're gonna be dealing with on a regular basis? Yeah. What's, you know? what's the point? Yeah. One of one of our favorite weddings, we, we went to a wedding and the bride was getting ready and, and so I went into the room where the bride was getting ready and, and there were three women in there with her helping. And, and so I came in and the bride and I, and one of them was the bride's mother and I had met her before, um, like just once. And so she said, you know, let me introduce you to everybody. And she said, I'm the bride's mother and this is the bride's other mother and this is the groom's <laughs> mother. And I was like, awesome. Yes. You know? and, and so I love to see that because not only do we do weddings where it's the bride and groom, but a lot of times now, especially, um, we had, we had one wedding where we did, we had to schedule the pictures by who could be at the reception at which time because uh, they were so contentious right and just i'm thinking can you not get along for an hour for this child you made together and that always made me sound but we, yeah. we had another wedding where the groom's parents had been married for like 40 years and the bride's parents had been remarried three or four times <laughs> and and so when we did the family pictures um we did we did she and and the bride apparently, you know, was always on good terms. They were all on good terms together. So when we did the bride's family, it was the bride and her mother and her father and ex and ex and ex and ex and current <laughs> spouses and you know and it and practically need a scorecard to keep track. You of pretty much. Is, I'm like, yeah. are you all okay if I just say bride parent? Because <laughs> I have no idea and I'm not going to keep track. Right. But it was it was nice 
to see that. It's nice to see when it doesn't work out and the parents can at least come together for something like a wedding and, yeah. and be civil to each other for a couple hours. We're not asking you to be best friends. We're just asking you to be together. So yeah, we've seen some of those, you know, second marriages and blended families that, that work together. I've heard it's easier if, if, if it's because they're widowed. Yeah. And I've seen a few of those, but, but for the most part, it seems to be, you know, I think it's how committed are you and how, and like my sister and her husband, they dated for quite a while Mm -hmm. before they got married. Well, yeah, I think especially if if you're going to be bringing kids together, let the kids get to know each other. Let the parent get to know the other person's kids. I mean, everyone needs chances to get to know each other before you put them all in a house together and expect them to be a family. And there's just Mm -hmm. so much writing on that. I think the other thing that helped too was that they didn't force them. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like, okay, these are now your siblings. You will all be best friends. Right. It was, you know, okay, we're all going to live together and we're going to figure this out. And, and, and I think one thing that helped is they all play soccer. They all, all eight of the kids are just ace soccer players and, and um, played like club level soccer wow. as teenagers mm-hmm. and, you know, played on varsity teams and stuff. And so they kind of had at least that common interest. Right. So whereas maybe they didn't get together socially, you know, they didn't double date and that kind of thing, but they at least had something that they could bond over. And I think that really made a difference. So that sounds like a good idea. If you're going to have kids all trying to get along, find yeah. a common interest, find yes. something that they can all agree yes. on and focus on that thing. That's a good idea. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of good stories. It's um, so it sounds like long distance relationships can and do work out, but they yes. take time and commitment. Mm-hmm. And um, the idea that you're going to work through whatever comes up. Yes, definitely. But getting to know each other as well as you can mm-hmm. ahead of time. Um, it it almost makes me think of the um, and I teach a class on Pakistan, and they talk about arranged marriages. And when you were yes. talking about the couple that wasn't comfortable together physically yet. <laughs> Oh that, yes. There's a video that we show in my course, and they show uh, this uh, this couple, and yeah, they look like total strangers. They didn't know each other at all, and um, but you know, in in that culture, divorce is not really an option, so they just made it work. But I always wondered because they didn't even speak the same language. He spoke English because he had lived in America, and he came back because his parents mm-hmm. wanted him to and married her. And I just thought, I hope that works out. But <laughs> yeah, that's very common in 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 Indian and in Pakistani cultures. And, I've done a number of Indian weddings, which, by the way, are like amazing. Oh, I know. I want amazing to go to one. And they're so much fun. I really um, want to go to one. And then, and they do a lot of arranged. In fact, I had, when I had my studio, when I lived in another state, um, I had a father who brought in his daughters at, at different times for me to do portrait sessions with them so that we could produce pictures for him to send. For And, and the amazing part to me was these were accomplished professional women uh-huh. um, but dad was still arranging marriages and 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 they were very candid with me about it so I learned a lot about you know how it would work and but I think that that goes to you know the idea that one of the prophets had something about any two people yeah if they're committed enough can make it work and I, I think, think that was Kimball uh-huh. yeah I think so I'm, and, and there's a lot of his advice where I kind of go um yeah uh, uh-huh. <laughs> but obviously there must be something to that you one is you, you hope if your parents are arranging a marriage that they really are thoughtful about what you need and not just what's advantageous for the family, which I think probably in those areas where they're still arranging marriages happens more now and, and maybe you get a little input. I know with these girls, she said, yeah, I get to say, you know, dad sets them up, but I get to say no. Oh, if that's I'm good. not. And I was like, oh, yeah. thank goodness. Yeah. Um, so you can, you know, you can make it work. I just think there's probably a lot that are happier than others. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah, it's the, it, it really, I think it all goes back to taking the time. And especially when your cultures are different, is getting to know and appreciate their cultures. Right. And, and, and taking the time to understand and, and incorporating that. You know, it used to be, oh, you come, I'm going to marry you, come to America, you're going to become American, we're going to do all American things. Now we're seeing more of you come and we blend our traditions and we blend our cultures. And yeah. I think that makes a big difference. So a much softer landing. Yes, for sure. I can't imagine how hard that would be. (laughs) No, I can't either. I I wouldn't do it. Well, thank you so much. These are great stories. Um, I hope that the lady that emailed me (laughs) got some positive um, affirmations there that long distance can work out. Um, And before we sign off, if anybody wanted to contact you as far as uh, working with you on um, 
starting a small business or anything like that, what, where would be a good place to contact you? Well, my website is marielesley.com. Okay. Um, so that's easy. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page that's Marie Leslie. Okay. Um, and that's probably, those are the probably easiest. I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, same thing. All right. <laughs> I try and keep it simple. My name is the same everywhere. Yes, that's good. Don't go through all those different iterations of your name. Awesome. So that's probably the best way. All right. And I will link to that on the show notes on my page at AnnetteTalks.com, which is where you can find this episode, as well as several other episodes on being single and a member of the church. So please find us, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube. Um, but come back to AnnetteTalks.com. Please comment, subscribe, um, share any ideas or any thoughts that you have. I want this to be a community website, um, and I want this to be a place where LDS singles gather. I'm going to bloom. Dad, I won't take things for granted Come what may, bring it on I'm gonna love it